Here at MacGyver's Workshop, we build, fix, or re-engineer just about anything. You never know what we'll be working on next. And if you're not too careful, you just might learn something. Hi there. Welcome to MacGyver's Workshop. And today, we have a 1998 Nissan Maxima in here. Uh, it's been in the shop before. Did some work to it and uh, we have a uh, wheel bearing problem uh, where the wheel bearing has gone bad and torn the hub up and then the CV axle came loose uh, the nut came loose that held the splines into the hub and that got all wonky and wore the splines out so now we're into it for a drive axle hub and bearing and all that so we're going to get cranking on here and uh, Okay, so, naturally, of course, the muddiest tire, because of all the snow and rain and everything we've had, would be the one that's uh, the one i got to take off. But, anyway, uh, the driver was complaining of some noise and racket um, uh, while uh, driving the car. And, uh, basically, what we've got here is that, which is bad juju. So we're going to take the wheel off and take the hub off and press the old bearing and hub out and replace it. We've got uh, new parts for it. Now over here we have our replacement parts and of course we have our bearing which is the root cause of the whole problem. And that is what we'll use to uh, we'll have to press out of the old hub. And then, of course, we need a grease seal to go on each side of it. Keep the grease in there. Now, sadly, since, um, since the CV axle, I don't have the tire off yet, so I'll have to uh, show you using the new axle and hub here. We shall get all this nonsense out of here. Open this all up nice and spiffy. I might add we have to be kind of careful here because this car has anti-lock brakes. And there's a there's a tone wheel with teeth on the side here. And we want to be careful not to damage it. This is all heat sealed together, so we'll just cut this all open. And be careful not to cut the rubber boots. Even has a little torsional or harmonic uh, little rubber dang it on there to. Uh, absorb rotational vibration and uh, basically what you've got is your front hub which has teeth in there and those teeth spline with these teeth like so and you can see very little free play on there now sadly the uh, the nut had come loose and allowed that little bit of free play when this thing's tightened down like it's supposed to you won't have any free play at all and it's just worn out the teeth inside this hub and worn out the teeth on the shaft so that's why Sometimes letting the problem go for a little while isn't exactly a good idea. Now, the current owner of the vehicle uh, is not to blame for this. They bought it that way. Um, but uh, uh, I reckon, uh, you know, for the price that, the, price that they got the car for, 
you know, they did okay. It's worth it for them to fix it, to have a second car. So, anyway, let's get cracking here and start tearing this down. One of my favorite sounds. <laughs> Love it. This is the yucky, disgusting part here. It's all muddy and icky and ugh. Yuck. <clears throat> all right. Next, we're going to have to uh, we're going to have to take this cotter key out, take this out, take this nut off, and We'll pull the caliper off and tie that off to the side. And uh, then we're just going to basically take the ball joint loose underneath and essentially get the whole hub out of here. And, uh, and we'll take it over to the press and press the old bearing and the hub out. So. Look at this. You can see how loose this is. You should not be able to turn that by hand at all. Uh. This is kind of stuck on here a little bit. Play heck getting that off of there. cage thing here is uh, damaged just a wee bit, but we can straighten that out. See, that's, that's bad. You should really have to wrench the crap out of that to get it off. That's why the splines and the teeth and all are all worn out inside the hub. So, sadly, this job is costing a little more than it really should because I'm sure that bearing me was making a heck of a lot of racket going around corners and stuff a long time ago uh, got a little washer here we don't want to misplace that plus somebody packed it full of grease that wasn't real smart I know that keeps them from seizing in there but still Oh, alrighty. Let's get the brakes off of there. What's that look like? 13 maybe? No, 14. You know us men, we can't judge size. That out of the way. Take our brake pads off. They're still fairly decent. Rotor looks like crap, but it's okay, I guess. This is not a car they're wanting to sink a lot of money into, so. Now, I'm going to take, uh, take this caliper bracket off. So we can remove our disc brake rotor.
know about you, but I always just kind of halfway put these things back in. Just a skosh. So you know where the bolts go later. I'll put the caliper mounting bolts or the, the bracket mounting bolts there and the caliper bolts in here. Just stick them in a couple of threads. It just beats the heck out of having a pile of bolts laying around. And you want to check your slides. Make sure they're nice and moving nice and freely. You don't want a caliper to get stuck and uh, eat up your brake pads. And one brake rotor. Get dokey. Well, the next thing we got to do is we have to disconnect the tie rod here. <clears throat> now I'm going to set the I'm going to set the wheel at about straight ahead. And we'll pull our little cotter key off of here. There we go. Now, let's see, what does that look like? That looks like a three-quarter. Let's see, here we go. Pop that bad boy off. And then, now if you got a tie rod puller and all that, that's all fine and dandy. But I found that even the tie rod puller still tear the boots up. So if you just give the give the uh, part of the hub where the tie rod goes into good switch smack with a BFH, you're uh, good to go. Look at that. Isn't that nice? Ooh. Time for an inner tie rod in. Hear that? Mmm, more bad juju. Mmm, they ain't heard about that yet. I don't reckon they'll be happy to hear that, but either way. Then we work on our bottom ball joint. Okay, now I'm going to be all in the way of this, but uh, of the camera here, but what we're going to be doing is we're going to take this nut off right here. I'm about ready to pull this little cutter key out so we can get that nut off. And then we will do the exact same thing. There we go. Yes, I've already, I already unbent it. So, take that off. We'll do the same thing we did to the tie rod and give the, give the uh, spindle here a good smack right there. And that'll loosen that up. And in addition to the BFH, we will use the BFP, okay, which is a pry bar, okay. It's a family show, so I'm not going to tell you what the uh, what all that means. But those of you in the know already know what that means: BFP and uh, BFH. So I don't need to lay it out in crayon for you. So let me go find a wrench that's going to fit that, and we'll see what we got. 